I attempted one of the steepest climbs in Colombia, and I had the cojones to do it on my road bike with standard road gearing, which was a huge mistake. As you can see, there are pitches with sustained gradients over 40%, making it both insanely steep, but also nearly impossible to turn over that big road chain ring, requiring over 600 watts of power just to grind out 58 RPMs. So after my failed attempt, I came back the next day on a loner mountain bike, a way too small loner mountain bike, and decided to take some revenge. But because I'm competitive, I wanted to challenge my brother-in-law first to the top. Here are the rules though. He had a three minute head start, and each time you have to unclip and take a rest, it's a 30 second penalty. So with that said, let's get started. All right, so early on, I knew the struggle was going to be maintaining balance. Um, I'm just going two miles an hour here, and I have, I have the gearing for it, but as you can see, every time I stand up, the issue, <laughs> Getting some encouragement from somebody descending there. The issue I'm having when I stand up is this bike is so small on me, my knees are knocking the uh, handlebars, and um, I am just not comfortable for a lot of reasons. I am just not comfortable on this bike, on this climb, but at the same time, I'm very competitive, right? So I don't want to put a foot down, I don't want to incur that penalty, and um, I'm just going to start doing the, uh, the old paperboy weave here, trying to make the most out of the entire road really just trying to level out that relentless 30 to sometimes 40% grade as best as possible. And honestly, it's going okay for me for the first few minutes of this climb. I mean, it's crazy. You think about like, oh, I've gone 100 meters on this climb, which is like a long distance, right? When you're going three kilometers an hour, two miles an hour. Um, and then we hit this section. Anytime in Colombia, at least, when you see these, these two tire track style roads, this means that, that trouble's coming. This means that it's going to get even harder because they put these down, you can see they're even grooved for traction. And now we're up close to 40%. GPS is kind of all over the place, but these are for traction so cars can get up and oh my God, I unclip. So I just pulled out of the pedal and that was it. Like once you <laughs> once you stopped, it's really hard to get started again on this type of gradient. So not only am I penalized the 30 seconds for stopping and, and resting and putting a foot down, in this case unintentionally, I also have to now go back down the hill and find a place where I can gather a little bit of speed just in order to get started again. And I managed to get clipped back in, I, I get going again, but this is my undoing. This is the big mistake I made is I panicked and I was like, okay, I gotta catch my brother-in-law. So I really step on it and I really get after it and this pace is unsustainable. Sweat's already dripping off my brow and you can see now my heart rate is now up in the 180s, which is dangerously high. Um, it's humid, it's hot, there's, there's no wind to cool me down. I felt like I was in a sauna this entire time. So um, I, was, I was really digging myself a hole here. And then by the time I get up and I can see my brother-in-law, I am totally in the red, totally seeing cross-eyed. And I able, I'm able to make a pass, but just briefly before I have to take yet another break, put my foot down, and incur another 30-second penalty. Meanwhile, my brother-in-law makes the pass. He is just cool, calm, and collected, doing exactly what you're supposed to do. He is riding his own pace. He is he's doing exactly what you should be doing in this situation. And I am just my own worst enemy, basically the tortoise and the hare. And what makes it even worse is once again, I cannot find an appropriate place to clip back in and, and gather enough speed to get started again. So I have to walk my bike for um, a good amount of time here just to find a spot where I can clip back in and get rolling. Finally make it to the top where my brother-in-law has been waiting for me for several minutes. Turns out I was the one who needed the three-minute head start. I absolutely got smoked. Kudos to my brother-in-law for crushing me. Although I challenge a rematch face on when you come to the United States. Come out to Alviso where I have home court advantage. Um, thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It actually means a lot to the channel. It's totally free, so I'd appreciate that. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.